Welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to the uh, X737 overhead project for our Air Manager. Before I get started, Christmas came early. We got the new uh, X Plane uh, version 11, and I wanted to show you a little bit about it. I'm very impressed. This is uh, overhead uh, LAX, looking south along the coastline. I have a uh, moderate settings on my uh, graphics card. I I'm doing HDR, but uh, Anna aliasing turned down a bit, reflections down a bit, and uh, wanted to give you a view of uh, what I'm looking at. I'm getting about 30 frames a second. But I think you'll agree that the uh, modeling is awesome. Some of the real drawbacks of uh, Air Manager, I mean, I'm sorry, X-Plane have been, have been overcome. And by the way, Air Manager works just great with the new version. Let me pan around here. And uh, hopefully we'll get a nice view of uh, of the uh, LA area. I'm sure the uh, graphics card. Uh, I'm using Open Broadcaster, and I'm not sure I can capture this completely. But just take a look at the airport here. You can see uh, ramps fully. Uh, filled with vehicles, fully filled, filled with traffic on the roads. We just pan around here. There's, There we are in our X737 on runway 7 left. I'll just pan around here and give you a nice view of the ramp area at LAX. You can see the airports not only are here now, and but well populated with realistic aircraft. All the gates and ground equipment, which will move, it's quite an awesome change. And if you look off in the distance there, you see the haze effects. Uh, beautiful day in LA, looking out across the basin. I'm sure this will break up a little bit, but I'm going to zoom in here with the uh, mouse wheel kind of show you what the what things look like. You can see the parking lots fully uh, filled with cars. You can see lots of uh, traffic out there, trucks and other vehicles on the road. Quite an improvement. Quite an improvement. Let me give you a view of the airplane. This is uh, one of the WestJet. Looks like we're rolling a little bit. The brakes aren't set. But look at the uh, effects of the engine out here. You can see the the uh, refraction due to the heat. That's the WestJet Disney livery. Okay, let's go in the cockpit and uh, see what we've done. So here we are looking at the overhead panel in the X737. Show you what I've done. I've worked on this center panel here. This center panel down through here. And uh, we're, uh, that's, I'll show you what I've done. And you can see there's a light here uh, that is, shines down on the pedestal. That's controlled by a knob down on the pedestal. Then we have a circuit breaker light. This light uh, controls lights that that shine on the uh, back of the uh, behind the pilots. There's circuit breakers there. This panel lights, as you can see, they uh, they will control the overhead panel lights. See, they're brightening as I turn that to full. Then we have the equipment cooling. Now there's, in the airplane, in the E&E &E compartment, the electronic in the equipment in the nose uh, under the belly of the cockpit area there, there's an area of, of important electronics and radios and uh, also includes the inertial navigation system, which is very critical because it provides the attitude and uh, heading information 
for the aircraft. So uh, in the weather, uh, you couldn't fly without that. So it's pretty important. And they have uh, two fans, one to uh, supply air in from the cabin into the E and E compartment, and one to exhaust it out. These both have a warning light to show if they fail. And uh, one is uh, powered on the left generator side, one on the right. So sometimes when you taxi out with a single engine, you have to turn this to alternate because the light will come on to tell you that, that you've lost that power. But, uh, but they're cross, crossed over, so you, you should have some flow in there. It's just like your computer case. Uh, you have usually a fans. Uh, some of the higher-end computers need a lot of cooling, have a, a fan sucking air in and another one sucking the air out. So it keeps a nice flow through the uh, case. But anyway, uh, there's an alternate position and a normal position. We normally keep it in normal. If we have some power interruptions on one of the buses, uh, we might have to switch that to alternate. The light comes on to tell us that. Then we have the emergency exit lights, a guarded switch here with a light. The light says, uh, not armed. And as you might guess, when this switch is not in the arm position, that light comes on. Uh, when it's in the on position, it turns the emergency exit lights on. Those emergency exit lights uh, have independent power source with batteries so that they'll operate even if the aircraft loses all of its power. And it's isolated from the aircraft power when it's, in the, uh, when it's on. In fact, those lights can be removed and taken out to use as a flashlight. Then the arm position, which is the center position, uh, those lights and the batteries are being charged and the lights are armed so that if there is an interruption to critical power buses in, in the case of an ac accident or just loss of power those lights will come on and in the off position uh, it isolates them they're not armed they can't be turned on by loss of power so it isolates them normally keep that switch with the guard down the light will be out the next area down here is the uh, seatbelt no smoking. Now, for those of you who are my age or, or older might remember when you were allowed to smoke on airplanes. I think it was probably in the uh, mid 80s to late 80s when that happened. I started flying in the airlines in the early 80s and smoking was still allowed so this sign had some function. Uh, you have an off position of course for that in the seatbelt sign. Then you have an auto position and an on position. Well, off and on are pretty uh, understandable. The lights, signs in the back, lit signs come on when you select on. They go off when you select off. Same thing with the seatbelt sign. The little dong, a little ding that you hear is whenever the lights go on, either one of the lights go on, you hear a ding. So we go off to auto and that you hear the ding. If you go from auto to on and it's already on, do the auto function you don't hear that so the question is what is the auto function well the uh, the no smoking sign is really connected to the flaps so that when the flaps are up and the seat belt sign is in auto the sign should the light should be off and when you turn it on it should be on when in other words uh, if you leave it in auto whenever the flaps are up the sign should the no smoking sign should go off, and when you when you're it should go on. When you are, uh, you know, when you're in the uh, situation where you have the flaps down. The seatbelt sign is is uh, functions with the gear. When it's in the auto position, when the gear goes down, that light comes on. So, you know, as a practice, we normally turn this to the auto position instead of off when we're on the air. And the reason we did that, and the same thing with the seatbelt sign, if for some reason we missed it on the checklist, when we put the flaps out, we would hear this the dong sound telling us that it had come on. Uh, so it would automatically turn it on before when we got when we started uh, to get close to landing. And the same thing with the seatbelt sign. That would go on when the gear came down to tell us, hey, you need to you need to have the gear. And I believe that how it is. I may have that backwards. It's been such a long time. Maybe could, well, this could be gear and that could be flaps. I'm, but from memory, I think that's the way it is. Another thing that people always ask is, what is this little thing here? This is a little slot, and there's a little metal hook that can hook onto the overhead panel and hold it up. And the reason they have this 
is the overhead panel is hinged in the back here, uh, right where it meets the, uh, the aft overhead panel. And on the front, I'm going to turn this off for a second. Uh, in the front, you can see there's two locks, one here and one here. So what happens is, obviously, you don't want, when you unlock these things, you don't want this thing to just fall down. It's hinged in the back and it'll hang down almost straight down. It allows the mechanics to get to the back side of this panel, you know, which is right up against the roof of the front of the airplane, to get back there to change the cannon plugs on the different panels when you change out the panels or you have to do maintenance back there. So the thing hangs down, right, almost hitting the pilot's shoulders. Uh, and it could be dangerous if it came down. And it's pretty darn heavy. So they put this little clip here. And what they do is they can disconnect these and then grab this panel and then pull this clip and let it down. The same thing, when they put it back up, they can push it up. And as they push it up, uh, engage this little hook, which is spring-loaded to push it in that direction towards the aft of the airplane. So as it as it engages, it'll hold it up there while they secure these screws that hold the panel up. So the panel is secured by a hinge on the back, uh, hinges on the back, and these screws in the front. And then this is an added a safety device to allow it to be held up while they're uh, really fixing it with these screws. You know, I remember smoking. By the way, I remember talking about when smoking wasn't legal. I remember uh, my experience uh, when I started flying in, in the 80s. It was still legal and captains would smoke in the cockpit and it could get pretty pretty t uh, tight up there. It's a small cockpit and if a guy was smoking, especially cigars, well I had one guy who flew, who liked to smoke a pipe and he would love, if you ever watch someone smoke a pipe, you know, it is not a pretty thing. I mean it puts out a puff of, of white smoke, you know, and uh, I almost felt like he needed the smoke goggles and the oxygen mask uh, in the cockpit. But thank goodness those days uh, concluded. Unfortunately, they concluded just about the time I made captain in the probably it would have probably been about 1987, I guess. Then anyway, when I made captain, uh, uh, of course, then I could control whether it was smoking in the cockpit. Well, it became illegal. So we did have a few captains though who, who were diehard smokers. Who uh, for a while after that they would taxi out, and if there was a delay. Uh, they would uh, just, uh, you know, kind of cheat and open the door, especially if I had a co-pilot who was, who was in on it, who was also a smoker. They'd kind of wink at each other and open their doors, their windows in the front, and uh, hang their cigarette out there and uh, blow their smoke out there. Uh, that was uh, pretty common there for a while. Anyway, I'm going to go back and uh, show you this panel again and con con conclude it. We have the... Uh, working our way down here. Of course we have another wiper control which works just like the left wiper which uh, as you can see is on the the APU panel here. And then we have uh, these two calls. Now I can't turn this light on because it's not pushed to press the test. Oops. It's not press the test. Uh, it, you press to put it out. But this is a call here a different a distinctive sound calling the flight attendant. If they call us this, we hear uh, the dong, but the, the little uh, blue light comes on. It says call, and then we can cancel that and put that out by hitting that button. There's also a ground call. There's a buzzer in the nose gear of the airplane, the nose wheel well. To uh, If we need to talk to the ground c c people, we can just buzz that, and they'll hear that down there, and, and uh, they'll come and uh, plug in their interphone in the wheel well and talk to us. And we usually use that when we push back. So. So that's basically what I've done. Uh, very happy that uh, Air Manager is working well with uh, X-Plane 11. I think X-Plane 11 uh, has some real, real positive things about it. It's a, it, it'll eat up a CPU and a graphics card. I mean, it, it is, uh, requires some performance, but the uh, visuals are stunning. All the ground equipment, all those uh, realism is just really, really great. So I'm excited about that. I'll be updating later. Next thing I'll be working on is this panel right down here, getting all the lights done. And then I'll have pretty much everything done except the aft overhead panel, which hasn't been modeled yet. Uh, so I'll start working on that. Uh, but that's just a big blank space now while he continues to develop X737. A freeware airplane, so it's hard to complain. It's a, you got to admit it's a beautiful airplane for an airplane that is free. And, uh, 
we give Benedict Stratman our big thumbs up for a great job that he's done. And he continues to make minor tweaks. And he's trying to find real realism in this simulator. So anyway, if I don't talk to you again, if I don't do another video before Christmas, which I should, but if I don't, I wish you a very happy holidays and enjoy your uh, time with your family.